The news at noon starts right now. Sunday set a record, the highest number of COVID-19 cases ever recorded in a single day here in Bear County. Yeah, according to the latest update, we saw 538 new cases, bringing our total well over 6,800. Nearly half of that amount added in just the past two weeks, making it clear the virus is still actively spreading. The death toll in Bear County rose to 97. Hospitalizations also went up to 406. But there is some good news. So far, 2,774 people have made full recoveries. And starting today, masks will be required at all area businesses under a new executive order here in Bear County. And businesses who don't comply could face fines. Judge Nelson Wolf recently talked about the new order and the surge in COVID-19 cases. Major cities across Texas are experiencing the same surge in cases, which Governor Greg Abbott has attributed to a number of factors, including bars, beaches, and a data backlog in Harris County. State officials have been keeping a closer eye on bars, shutting down a dozen over the weekend that violated social distancing guidelines. If you are experiencing any COVID-19 symptoms, testing is available. In fact, drive through testing sites now open in the far west side of town. It opened at 8 this morning and it'll stay open until 4 this afternoon. Testing will be conducted at the Bear County Emergency Services District 2 Fire Station 121. That's located at 2096 Tally Road. In order to get tested at this location, you must set up an appointment by calling the number right there, 512-883-2400. And as the coronavirus pandemic continues to develop, this, this, so does the state's response to this crisis. Coming up this afternoon, Governor Greg Abbott will update us on the state's efforts to fight the coronavirus. A press conference is expected to start at 2 this afternoon. We'll, we'll, we will be live streaming it right here on KSAT 12 and on KSAT.com. Be sure to stick with us for the latest coverage on the coronavirus pandemic. And the World Health Organization is warning we have entered a dangerous new phase of the pandemic. And there have been over 250 deaths and 25,000 new cases in the U.S. over the past 24 hours alone as states reopen across the nation. ABC's Rita Roy has more for us. A dire warning from health officials with the country reopening and at least 22 states seeing an increase in cases, 12 setting daily records. I don't think we're going to see one, two and three waves. I think we're going to just see uh, one very, very difficult yeah. forest fire of cases. A new model shows Florida could become the country's new epicenter. In this chart of Miami, you can see projected cases skyrocketing in July. More than half of the cases reported on Saturday were under 30 35 years old. Doctors urging young people, especially those living with older family members, to take this seriously. We're starting to see these asymptomatic spreaders passing along to their family members, their parents and their grandparents, who are definitely more likely to get sick as opposed to a younger, healthier individual. Initially, Governor Ron DeSantis claimed the jump was a result of increased testing, but now he says there's more to it. That's an indication, that certainly in that age group, that you're seeing more transmission in the community. It's not purely just a function of the fact that they're testing more. Also reporting more cases, Texas, South Carolina, and California, where healthcare workers at El Centro Regional Medical Center say they're overwhelmed. It's constant suffering and death and dying. However, some areas are pushing forward. New York City, the country's former epicenter, entering phase two of reopening today. That includes outdoor dining, salons, barber shops and more retail stores. Today is a very, very important day for this city. As the nation's largest city, the nation's largest economy gets back on its feet, phase two begins today. A huge step forward, the biggest step forward. Meantime, others are scaling back on reopening plans. Tennessee's Shelby County, which includes Memphis, could return to phase one after seeing its largest single day increase of cases over the weekend. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We are less than 24 hours away from the results in our third Bear Facts case at Rivard report poll of the year. The latest poll covered two major topics the recent protests, and the coronavirus pandemic. The poll also aims to take a look at the ways race and policing intersect. And there will also be a virtual town hall tomorrow. Those on the ground amid this protest 
San Antonio's police chief and San Antonio's mayor, along with Bear County's district attorney, all scheduled to be a part of tomorrow's discussion. We've also asked you to send us your questions about the race and policing. The live discussion begins tomorrow at 6.30 on air and we will also be live streaming the event on KSAT TV. Two witnesses to an overnight shooting on the north side now have some troubles of their own. They were arrested outside the home where a woman was seriously wounded in the 3300 block of Jenkins Drive. But as Katrina Weber reports, the charges against them so far are not tied to the shooting itself. Police needed no crime scene tape. Their presence was enough to let people know something was going on along Jenkins Drive near Thousand Oaks. Still, Garrett Herbst nearly slept through it all. The cops actually rang our doorbell this morning. Uh, they were hoping to catch some video from um, our ring doorbell. His 4 a.m. wake up call was a bust for police. He had no video or information on what happened across the street. Officers found his 44 year old neighbor with gunshot wounds in her belly and leg. But they say she refused to tell them much about how it happened. That was kind of scary when they were telling me that the, um, you know, that someone had been shot. Herbst also wanted answers, worried the trouble inside that one home might spill over into the neighborhood. Police say the wounded woman lived in this partially boarded up home along with children who weren't hurt. They found several other people there too and tried questioning them but had no luck. Here in the daylight, police were able to broaden their focus, and they say they realized that that house wasn't the only trouble spot. After searching a pickup in the driveway and the pockets of one witness, police found what they suspect were methamphetamines. They arrested that man and a woman on drug charges. Investigators say they believe drugs also were at the center of the shooting. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to an update in a murder investigation. Police say they've caught a suspect and he may have tried to cover his tracks. Police are now accusing 48-year-old Felix Sanchez of shooting and killing Jose Ramon Jurado back on June 13th at a bar on Vance Jackson near 410. Police say Sanchez and the victim were sitting on the back patio of the bar with a woman when they began to get into a heated argument and shot the victim. Surveillance footage shows both Sanchez and the woman dragging the body to a nearby alley for a few hours before Sanchez returned to clean up the blood with bleach. A motorcyclist is dead after he lost control of his bike, causing him to crash early this morning. The fatal accident happened on the northeast side in the 11,000 block of Crosswinds Way. Sarah Costa takes us to the scene of the crash. Police say the motorcyclist was driving northbound here on Crosswinds Way when he hit a curb, lost control, flew off his bike, ultimately hitting this fire hydrant. The man driving this motorcycle was wearing a helmet when he crashed his bike early Monday morning, according to a police report. But it wasn't enough to save his life. The San Antonio Police Department and EMS crews responded to the scene just after one this morning in the 11,000 block of Crosswinds Way near Warsbach Parkway and O'Connor Road. Police say after striking that curb, the driver was thrown one direction and his victory motorcycle slid underneath him for several more feet. Rescue crews attempted to save the man's life but were unsuccessful. Police say the man died at the scene. The medical examiner's office was not able to identify the driver, just that he was a man in his 30s. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up this half hour, should be a big day for the Cowboys quarterback, Dak Prescott, mm -hmm. sort of. We'll explain coming up in sports. And a woman follows in her mother's footsteps how that journey is leading to great things after college as she pursues a career in the healthcare field. We're here at KSA. We have been shining a spotlight on our local high school and college graduates. Stephanie Cerna introduces us to a recent graduate from the University of the Incarnate Word who is a veteran and a nurse and is looking forward to helping others during this challenging time. My mother is actually a nurse and just seeing everything that she did really inspired me. Rhonda Catalina has always been drawn to the medical field, so when she joined the Navy as enlisted, she was a hospital corpsman. So I spent about seven years doing medical care in the Navy and transitioned to this side. So my dream's always been to be a nurse. It just took me about 10 years to get there. 
Rhonda now has a bachelor's in science nursing, and through the Navy's medical enlisted commissioning program, Rhonda was able to remain active duty throughout nursing school at the University of the Incarnate Word. After I graduated, I got commissioned into the U.S. Navy Nurse Corps. So in a couple months, I'll be moving to North Carolina and working at a naval hospital there. I transferred from the enlisted side to the officer side. So I'm starting out as an O1 in the Nurse Corps. Rhonda is originally from Shelbyville, Illinois, but her service has taken her to Italy, San Diego, and San Antonio, where she says she did a lot of community outreach with the Incarnate Word. They focus on not just the educational material, but like a holistic and spiritual aspect of caring for people. And they really care about like the underserved populations and reaching out to them and giving us the tools that we need to help people. So it was a really special experience to learn at the Incarnate Word. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Congratulations to her outside with live cam. Little warm already and a little muggy. But it yeah. is cloudy though, so that kind of helps. That's right, uh, Patty. We were able to see clouds stick around a little bit longer, but they're starting to break up now. In the aquifer, the aquifer is actually down a little bit more than half a foot over the past 24 hours. We're now below average for the month, and we'll be watching the aquifer closely. In the pollen count, it's, it's all good. Mold is low at 230. Pigweed and grass are low at 10. I want to show you something. Let's take a trip into outer space, shall we? This is a look at one of the satellites up there, one of our GOES satellites uh, that just stays put. And as you can see, if you squint hard enough, this is Africa. You can see the Saharan dust plume has made its way across a good portion of the Atlantic. Now, while this is expected to make it to San Antonio later on this week, it could really only cause minor issues for some folks that suffer from allergies. And don't expect a sandstorm or a dust storm with this. It just may make for a little haze on the horizon. So this is a part of the weather story, but I would say our big part of the weather story this week is our chance for some rain. In the maximum rainfall potential through Friday, in some places around San Antonio, we could see pockets of two to three inches of rain when all is said and done. So coming up in the forecast, I've got a good time line of when we can expect rain in, the, in this upcoming week. And of course, I'll have a look at some uh, of the radar right now to show you where the rain is on the radar. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want San Antonio's latest news and weather streaming free on KSAT TV. So what I think Sarah was telling us is there's a good case of mud. <laughs> well, my grass could sure do some, some mud, Sarah. Some mud. We definitely, we definitely could use a little bit of rain here around San Antonio, but we're not getting any rain right now. In fact, it's going to stay rain free all day for us here in San Antonio, but that could change as we head even as early as tomorrow. So we've got a lot to cover in the forecast. 87 degrees outside. It's still fairly cloudy and it's definitely humid out there. We've got dew points in the 70s, humidity at 63%. All because we've been seeing a steady southeast wind for the last few days. Few gusts up to 25 miles per hour from the southeast, tapping into that Gulf of Mexico moisture. Showing you the satellite right now because you can see that these clouds are thinning a little bit and breaking up a little bit. We've got a layer of of low level clouds uh, moving in from the south and then we've got a layer of high level clouds some offshoot from some showers and storms out near the Houston area. So we are going to have a little bit more cloud cover than we have the last few days. That'll help our high temperatures to not be so warm, but we'll still get into the 90s today. Right now outside in San Antonio, it's 87 degrees, 91 in New Braunfels, really sunny out toward Del Rio where it's a lot warmer than in San Antonio, 94 degrees out toward Del Rio, 84 up in Rock Springs. But even though we're in the 80s right now, because of the humidity, it feels like it's near 95 degrees in San Antonio. It feels like it's close to 100 out in New Braunfels. And it feels like it's 100 down in Pleasanton. So don't underestimate that humidity. It makes it feel hot one way or another. In the future cast today, we will see those clouds break up a little bit. Partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. We'll see a high temperature probably right around about 95 with a heat index close to 100. Uh, all because of those morning clouds a little bit cooler uh, than we expected earlier, but only by 
few degrees. Still going to be a hot day. This is a look at our weather setup. You'll notice that there was plenty of rain for the Dallas Fort Worth area, and now there's plenty of rain for the Houston area. All of this is following this northwestern flow. And here in San Antonio, we're going to tap into that northwestern flow over the next few days. And that's why in the future cast, you see some showers and storms developing out near the San Angelo area. They may hold on by early tomorrow and make it to San Antonio in the form of isolated showers and storms throughout the day tomorrow, not only in the morning, but also in the afternoon. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. The chance for rain tomorrow is really only going to be about 30% for isolated storms will start off cloudy by the afternoon will be partly cloudy 94 for the high again with the humidity should feel close to 100 southeast winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour and then our rain chances are really going to go up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. However, the chance for rain will only be 40%. That is still the highest chance for rain we've had in a while. So not everybody will see rain around San Antonio, but there's a good chance that those who do see rain will see pockets of maybe two to three inches of rainfall. So that's the nature of scattered rain. There are the haves and the have nots, and that will be the case for the rest of the week for us. Now, the good news is with the extra cloud cover, high temperatures should hover right around 90 instead of soaring into the triple digits. And just a reminder again that we could have a haze on the horizon because of that Saharan dust that will probably make it to us by at least the end of the week. And again, it's not going to be a dust storm, a sandstorm or anything like that, just a little haze on the horizon may aggravate your allergies a, a smidge and then we'll see a generally good weekend ahead just hot and humid david patty well if it's going to be hot and humid you might as well get some rain out of it <laughs> yeah. hey with the resumption of the nba season getting closer coaching on the sidelines for some of the older guys still a question thanks to COVID 19 and the green flag is scheduled to drop today at talladega Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. While the NFL players continue to work out and get ready for what they hope will be an upcoming season, the rise in COVID-19 cases in the states across the country, including here in Texas, has the concern of the medical director for the NFL Players Association. His concern is rising as well. He has issued a warning to all of its players to immediately stop working out together. In an email sent out this weekend, Dr. Tom Mayer says, it's our consensus medical opinion that in light of the increase in COVID-19 cases in certain states that no players should be engaged in practicing together in private workouts. We know that the Cowboy star running back Elliot, Ezekiel Elliott has tested positive for the coronavirus along with former Houston Texan, now Denver Bronco Kareem Jackson. And one of the first was Bronco star linebacker Von Miller, who has since recovered. It is going to be a big day for Cowboys and their star quarterback, Dak Prescott. He is set to sign a deal that will pay him just over $31 million this season. The problem, it's a franchise tag payday and not the long-term deal that he's looking for. That's according to ESPN. However, the two sides still have until July 15th to work out a new long-term contract. Right now, the two sides can't agree on the length of the contract. Dak and his representatives want to sign a four-year deal that will make him the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL, but the Cowboys want a minimum of a five-year contract for the fifth-year quarterback. Currently, Russell Wilson is the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL, an average of $35 million a season. That's after he agreed to a four-year $140 million deal last year that includes $107 million in guaranteed money. With the spike in COVID-19 cases in Florida, we still don't know for sure if Greg Popovich is going to be allowed to be on, with his team on the floor when the season resumes. At 71 years old, he is in the category that is more susceptible to the coronavirus and therefore is considered a high risk even in the bubble environment. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver has more than hinted that coaches in Pop's age category, that includes the Rockets' Mike D'Antoni and the Pelicans' Alvin Gentry, may be required to be in a separate room while the games are being played. The Spurs consider this to be a huge disadvantage for a team trying to keep their 22 season playoff streak alive. Fans all revved up to see some live NASCAR action in person yesterday afternoon, but the weather had other plans for the third straight weekend and NASCAR race delayed. The green flag 
at the Geico 500. We'll get started today. The original start time at Talladega, 2 o'clock central, with the green flag set to be waved around 224. But lightning strikes were spotted multiple times over the next two hours. So pending another bout of weather, the Geico 500 is going to start this afternoon at 2. <laughs> Hey, tomorrow, Joshua Franco will be fighting at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas against the undefeated Andrew Maloney. The 12 round bout will be for Maloney's WBA World Super Flyweight Championship belt, and Franco is ready for this world title shot. He's just a, a tough, skilled guy. Um, he comes to fight, you know, um, he's, he's, he's undefeated, so, you know, he, he's, he's going to try to keep that, that all on his record, but. Uh, he's expecting some, you know, something easy, but I'm going to surprise him for sure. But I, I've, you know, I've gone 30 rounds with Oscar and Greta. We had trilogies, you know, and, you know, with all those rounds, you know, I, I had to bite down and I had to, you know, put, put it all in the ring. But, you know, I've gained a lot from that. I've learned a lot from that. And I know what I have to do, you know, to be, to be the winner in the fight. Word can't even describe how excited I am. You know, I'm training very hard, pushing myself to the limit. And, you know, I, I know I want that world title. I've been working hard for it. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving that ring without, without the belt. You can read more about the upcoming fight on Instant Replay, the page right there on our website, ksat.com. And congratulations to upcoming boxer Robert Rodriguez, who turns 21 today. He fought on Thursday night in Las Vegas and got the second-round TKO victory. Rodriguez, who goes by the nickname Biggie, is a bantamweight out of McCullum High School. Biggie is 8-0-1 with four knockouts and will fight again on Tuesday prior to Joshua Franco's championship title bout. I like that. Biggie, and he's a bantamweight. I wonder where that comes from. Biggie, 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 like the song? May maybe. <laughs> maybe. Hey, coming up on the news at noon, a coronavirus case increases. The CDC has taken another look at mask recommendations when they could issue an update. New today at five, beefed up meat prices. You've probably noticed it's costing more to make those burgers and toss a steak on the grill. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes a look at just how much more you're paying and some ways to stretch your food dollar and even make the menu a little healthier. Now to the latest on a terror attack in the UK where three people died and three others sustained injuries. One of the three who were killed, an American man from Philadelphia. ABC's Julia McFarland has more for us. A stabbing in England, now not just a British tragedy. An American citizen confirmed among the dead. The news confirmed by U.S. Ambassador Woody Johnson in a tweet. He writes, I offer my deepest condolences to the families of those killed in the attack on June 20th. To our great sorrow, this includes an American citizen. Our thoughts are with all those affected. We condemn the attack absolutely and have offered our assistance to British law enforcement. The Philadelphia Inquirer naming him as 39-year-old Joe Ritchie Bennett from Philadelphia. His brother telling the newspaper, our family is heartbroken and beside ourselves. He's one of three people killed Saturday evening at a park in the city of Reading, 40 miles west of the capital, London. Among the dead is a teacher, mourned by his students who described him as inspirational. At the school he taught, the bell rang out to mark the start of a moment of silence. Witnesses say a lone attacker with a knife shouted unintelligible words before stabbing people gathered in groups. So, so quick. It was over in seconds. It was just, it wasn't a friend, like it wasn't a frenzied attack. It was just one after the other quickly going for as many people as possible and then run. British police confirming the attack as a terrorist incident with the National Counterterrorism Command leading the investigation. What we saw here on Saturday evening in Reading was the actions of one lone individual. We should bear that in mind. The police have that individual in custody. They're not looking for anybody else. We should all remain alert. The 25-year-old suspect was arrested on Saturday night shortly after the attack took place. He's been identified in British media reports as being of Libyan origin. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. There are now more than 2 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 across Latin America. That's according to the latest numbers by Johns Hopkins University. Brazil has the most of the coronavirus cases in Latin America with more than 1 million cases, followed by Peru, Chile, Mexico, and Colombia. The United States still leads globally with over 2 million cases. 
And amid all those rising cases, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention is planning to update its recommendation on masks. The CDC researchers have been conducting a scientific review about the masks during the coronavirus pandemic. Scientists wanted to study if masks protect people from contracting COVID-19, not just preventing them from spreading it. The CDC has already published guidance on its website. One recommendation says people should wear masks when they leave their home. The other recommends people wear a mask if they cannot properly social distance. The new guidance is expected, quote, soon. With states continuing to reopen in different phases across the U.S., researchers say the spread of COVID-19 may be seen in very specific places. Marcella Perry explains why experts cert say certain hotspots are flaring up. As places open back up, people aren't staying home. And as more people interact with others, COVID-19 spreads. Researchers from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the University of Pennsylvania have been tracking cases across more than 500 U.S. counties with active outbreaks and projecting where the virus will go next. They say the most concerning areas for further spread continue to be here in Texas, but also Arizona, the Carolinas, and Florida. In fact, in fact, they're reporting the Sunshine State could be the next large epicenter. Alabama is also flaring back up, and new risk is being detected in Louisiana, especially in the parishes around New Orleans. The researchers say cases seem to be moving south to north along major traffic corridors, like I-95 on the east coast, I-85 in the south, and I-5 and I-10 in the west. We're now seeing the full effects of increased travel over the Memorial Day holiday. Researchers say Myrtle Beach and Hilton Head, South Carolina, are concerning, as well as Galveston, Texas, and Lake Charles, Louisiana. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. The researchers say they're also now seeing some evidence of increasing social distancing in several hotspot locations, which may help to flatten the curve of evolving epidemics. And Sarah Spivey is here with some positive news, just some chances of rain, which is yeah. great. Uh -huh. Any chance is a good chance. It really is, Patty. You know, June is actually our rainiest month of the year, typically in San Antonio, and we have seen less than half an inch of rain so far when we normally see more than four inches of rain for the month. So we do have a chance for rain in the forecast. It's just not today. In fact, most of the rain right now is out near the Houston area. You can see all the flashes of lightning they're getting out there and the bouts of heavy rain fall. We're getting some cloud cover from a few of those blow off storms. But if you do live along the coastal plain like near Victoria, Beeville, you've been seeing some spotty showers from that that has since come to a close. And around here in San Antonio, the only thing we're left with in the atmosphere right now are a little bit of clouds and you can see that those clouds are are hanging on. Uh, we do have some pockets of sunshine and they're starting to thin out quite a bit. So I do expect that as we head into the later hours of the afternoon, thermometer will be rising. Right now we are at 87 degrees. It's 91 in New Braunfels where they're seeing a little bit more sun. Same story down in Pleasanton, 94 in Del Rio, 95 in Creasel Springs, but still 72 in Houston. Now coming up, we're going to talk about the pollen count, which is low today, but we'll also talk about how there could be a little dust in the air uh, in the week ahead, just from uh, some Saharan dust making the long trek more than 5,000 miles from the Saharan desert to San Antonio. And it could have very similar effects to allergies for some folks. I'll have that and a look at the aquifer coming up. Patty. All right, thanks, Sarah. An Ohio man thinks it's time for change. The new name he is proposing for the city of Columbus and how it honors a celebrity chef. And there's a net and a court, but don't confuse it with tennis. It's called pickleball. How you can take part in the latest sports craze coming up. It's one of the biggest nights of the year for athletes around the world. However, this year's ESPYs weren't like the previous ceremonies. I look at the most moving moments coming up in the spotlight. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. 
Tyson Foods seeing yet another coronavirus outbreak at one of their plants in now China is suspending poultry imports from the source. The company announced over the weekend that 227 of their workers at their Berry Street facility in Springdale, Arkansas, have tested positive for COVID-19, and all but four of them were asymptomatic. Now, since early June, 481 employees across their Northwest Arkansas operations have tested positive for the virus. Meanwhile, after a widespread backlash, Snapchat is now issuing an apology for their Juneteenth filter that many people on the app found offensive. The filter asks users to smile to break the chains of slavery, and once the user smiled, the digital chains were broken. The social giant now owning the failure, admitting that they didn't fully consider the racist undertones of the filter. And Elon Musk announcing that he will once again be pushing back Tesla's battery day, as well as their shareholder meeting, deciding social distancing concerns. The battery day event was slated for July the 7th, and Tesla was expected to reveal details about its million-mile battery. Musk says the highly anticipated event may end up being combined with Tesla's shareholder meeting. A tentative date is set for September the 15th. And that's a chatter business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from New York City. One of the biggest nights in sports looked a little different this year. The SPs went virtual due to the pandemic. Hosts Russell Wilson, Megan Rapino, and Sue Bird kicked off the night on ESPN with a call to action for all athletes saying the country needs change. For the first time in its 28-year history, the SPs only ce celebrated narrative awards amidst shortened and postponed athletic seasons. The Jimmy V Award for Perseverance going to Taquarius Ware, the running back now playing for a small Minnesota college, was badly burnt in a fire at four years old with just a 20% chance to live. I didn't quit. I'm going to college now for football, so I'm proving wrong. Minnesota Twins right fielder Nelson Cruz got emotional while accepting the Muhammad Ali Sports Humanitarian Award. He was recognized for building a police station, medical clinic, and uh, procuring a fire truck for his small Dominican Republic hometown. The NBA All-Star Kevin Lo Love's inspirational advocacy for mental health and wellness earned him the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. Congratulations to them. A petition to rename the city of Columbus, Ohio, has more than 17,000 signatures. The new proposed name, Flavortown. Tyler Woodbridge started the online petition saying he thinks the community needs a new name altogether. Christopher Columbus is criticized for his cruelty to in, in, indigenous people, so the city has taken down his statue from in front of City Hall. The name Flavortown honors celebrity, foodie, and Columbus native Guy Fieri. All right, let's check in with Sarah Spivey out there. It's warming up. Yeah, it is warming up. In fact, just a little bit of sun here has sent our temperatures into the upper 80s. Like I said earlier, pollen count not too bad today. We are going to be watching for the Saharan dust making its way to San Antonio later on this week. You can see that plume of dust right there across the Atlantic. Now, when it makes it here, it'll just cause a haze to the horizon and maybe a little bit of issues for those who struggle from allergies. The big weather story this week, however, is the potential for some rain. Pockets of two to three inches of rain will be possible. This is our best chance for rain in a while. I've got the details coming up. Warm and humid. You would hope that with all this humidity, something one of these days would fall out of the sky. <laughs> well, something is falling, but maybe in just some spots. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, uh, Patty. We are going to be seeing a good chance for rain later on this week, but it will be scattered at best. So there will still be some folks that don't just see that much rain uh, for about Wednesday on to the Friday, but for some folks, it looks good. So we've got a good chance for scattered rain later on this week. Right now, all the rain, though, is located out near the Houston and Galveston area, very electrified. We've had some showers out on the coastal plain earlier this morning for areas like Beeville, Victoria, uh, Hallettsville, and also Quero and Carnes 
city, but in San Antonio, it stayed dry. What we have received from those showers and storms out near Houston, a little bit extra cloud cover, which has helped to keep temperatures down slightly, but it's still hot outside. You can see that those clouds are really starting to break up right now and thin out, even for the hill country where they're a little thick at the moment. And as a result of that, temperatures are starting to warm up. It's 87 in San Antonio, 91 in New Braunfels, 92 in Pleasanton, 94 in Del Rio. But watch this. Humidity makes it feel like it's 94 degrees outside. And down in Pleasant, it feels like 104 out there because of the high humidity. It feels close to 100 out in New Braunfels as well. So yeah, it's steamy outside, even though the thermometer is technically in the 80s. And as we head into the rest of the afternoon, we'll have partly cloudy skies and temperatures will get into the mid 90s for the afternoon. High 95 degrees, feeling close to 100 because of that high humidity. And in the evening, it should be quiet but muggy. Uh, not too bad though. You should be able to sit out on the porch for a really nice sunset tonight if you get the opportunity. In our weather setup, notice that we've had some showers and storms near Dallas, Fort Worth and down to Houston, kind of following that northwest flow in the atmosphere. We are going to be on the side of this northwest flow for a few days, and that's why we have a decent chance for some rain, like what they saw in Dallas, Fort Worth and down near Houston starting tomorrow, but it will be isolated tomorrow. You can see that uh, Tuesday, early Tuesday morning, northwest flow may push some showers and storms from the San Angelo area to around San Antonio. We'll call it about a 30% chance throughout the day for a few pop up showers, maybe a few storms as well, uh, and we'll be on the lookout for those. Again, only about a 30% chance for rain for your Tuesday, starting off cloudy, then we'll gradually see those clouds clear in the afternoon, and we'll carry a chance for a 30% uh, chance for a shower or storm. 94 degrees for the high, and once again, winds will be breezy from the southeast at about 10 to 15 to even 20 miles per hour. But after Tuesday, our rain chances go up. 40% chance for scattered showers and storms Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Once again, the key word there is going to be scattered. There will be people that see rain and a good amount of rain. And then there will be those that just don't. And it looks pretty good for the hill country. And we want that to be the case because that's where the Edwards Aquifer is. And we really want to see the rainfall on the Edwards Aquifer, especially the recharge zone, because that would allow for the aquifer to go up. It's been steadily declining for the last several weeks. And this is not a guarantee for two to three inches of rain on the northwest side of Bear County. This is showing you maximum rainfall potential uh, through Friday. So again, there's a chance for scattered showers and storms. It will come from Wednesday to Friday. As a result, temperatures will be down. Highs only in the 90s, low 90s, near 90 degrees and in the 80s. And at the same time, we could have some of that Saharan dust in the air, making an orange brownish hue to the horizon, allowing for a bit of a haze and maybe aggravating allergies for some folks. I have to stress, whenever you hear dust coming in, sometimes you could think, oh, there's gonna be a dust storm. That's not going to be the case at all. This will, these particles are so tiny and they're high up in the atmosphere. There won't be anything in the way of a dust storm, but it could aggravate allergies for some folks. A lot like having a pollution day for some folks. Pollution so, day. yeah, you know when sometimes the pollution is worse than other days? Or just a mud day. Or a mud oh. day. You know, we could... Because, you know, yeah. your car will turn colors. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, be careful and make sure to wait to get a car wash, I think, oh. until this weekend. Not yeah. now? Not now. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Sarah. Very much. Appreciate it. I'm going to watch my clothes. A sport involving a net and, of course, gaining popularity across the country. And you can play it right here in town. A look at pickleball coming up after the break. You just might be surprised to learn that the fastest growing sport in the United States involves a net and a court. And it's not tennis. It's called pickleball. It's here in San Antonio. Chicken and Pickle recently opened up and is finding a fun and accessible way to showcase this sport. The staff recently showed members of the Insta Replay team what the venue has to offer and how to play pickleball. This is Aaron Trost, the pickleball pro here at Chicken and Pickle San Antonio, and he's gonna tell us all a little bit about pickleball. Give us the elevator pitch of what pickleball is. Pickleball, I think it's like big ping pong. It has some similarities to tennis, and you serve underhanded, so the serve is really easy to get in, and it's really easy to return. I feel like you can play 
for 10 minutes and start having those rallies, and that's the fun of a racket sport. <laughs> It's a very addicting sport, it's a very fun sport, and it's a great way to stay in shape. Pickleball is a sport that can be picked up pretty pretty quickly. Um, it's not intimidating at all. What is it about chicken and pickle that makes sense to put those two things together? Both of them bring people together. They're both social. We're all about our pickleball, great food, and cold beer. Those are, those are three things that we're very passionate about. We're open for the entire community. You know, we don't focus on any specific group or, or demographic. We are open for anybody that wants to come hang out here. I can see a lot of stuff going on beyond pickleball. What are some of those recreational activities that you guys offer here in addition to pickleball? Well, first of all, we have a lot of yard games, whether it be giant Jenga. We have an enormous battleship. And then we have a, a shuffleboard court over there. We have a bocce ball. And then we have a lot of games inside and outside people can play too. Now I understand you had a positive COVID-19 test on June 12th, but you temporarily shut down. You put in a lot of safety precautions. Could you tell me a little bit about those? The health and the safety of our guests and our associates is our number one priority. As soon as we found out, as a company, we decided to immediately close down and have our cleaning partner come in to perform a special COVID clean on the property. We also had all of our associates immediately go be tested so that we can ensure a safe return. We feel confident that we can offer a safe product to all of our, our guests and, and keep the environment safe for our associates. My first point. That looks like a fun it way to spend sure an afternoon. It did, yeah. Maybe a little humid for right now. <laughs> Hey, you can try your hand to pick a ball. Just go check out everything for the, yourself. The contact information right there. I like that. Chicken and pickle. I mean, it sounds good. Yeah. The story originally aired on Instant Replay. To get the best sports coverage in town from the pros to our local sports, make sure to watch Instant Replay Sundays at 11 o'clock following the night beat. And make sure to follow Greg Simmons, Larry Mears, and the KSAT 12 sports team on social media. We will, re <laughs> we will be right back. We shall return. <laughs>